Okay, the last section of chapter six. Or chapter six. Where'd that come from? This is chapter two. Last section of chapter two. Okay, this is solving equations or inequalities. Uh, and you've done inequalities before. These are nonlinear inequalities. Just to give you an idea of what the heck that means. This right here is an example of a linear inequality, and this is what you did probably in Algebra 1. If you were going to solve this, you'd subtract 5, subtract 5, negative 3x greater than or equal to, so minus 5 is 2, and we would divide by negative 3. Uh, anytime you divide by negative, you remember you switch the sign. If you remember that lovely song Mr. Sandlin used to sing, and we get x is less than or equal to negative 2 thirds. In interval notation, that would be negative infinity all the way up to negative two-thirds, and including. So that's a linear inequality, and the reason it's called linear is because um, it's in the form of a line. This is like slope-intercept form. Uh, Nonlinear inequalities means that we're going to do the same stuff, but it's with higher degree polynomials, things that are x squared, x cubed, or rational functions, those fraction things we've been doing with. And this is where sign analysis comes into play, which I talked about in class, um, I don't know, this week. Uh, and sign analysis is, I'm not sure that's an official math term. I don't know if the Math League of America approves that. But uh, it is a method for determining when a function is positive or negative. And positive or negative is what we're going to shoot for with these inequalities. Uh, what you need to remember is the stuff to put on your number line is stuff like x-intercepts and roots, uh, which are the same thing, and any discontinuities, vertical asymptotes, holes, or jumps. So those are the things that you want to put on your number line. Y-intercepts don't matter and horizontal asymptotes don't matter. So just these two things are the main things you want to put on it. Uh, so with that said, let's do a couple of examples and show you what the heck we do. Uh, this one is simple, uh, is a, a quadratic one. And if you remember solving quadratic equations, if it were x squared plus 4x equals 21, uh, you would solve that by setting it equal to 0 and factoring. We're going to do the same thing with this. We're going to move that 21 over. And that's going to be our first step for all of these uh, nonlinear inequalities. You want to set it equal to zero, or greater than, or less than, or whatever it says. Uh, once uh, we have that over, we will factor. So now it's factoring to x plus 7, x minus 3. And I have two roots of negative 7 and positive 3. And those are the two things that I want to put on the number line. So I'll draw a number line. And make sure you put your numbers in order. Make sure you put your numbers in order. So I have one number of negative 7. I have another one of positive 3. And those are x-intercepts. Roots are also known as zeros. So I'm going to put a 0 above these. And what that 0 means is if I plug 3 into my equation, x3 plus 7, which is 10, and 3 minus 3, which is 0, if I plug in 3, I get 0 for the equation. That's why I put a 0 up there. And that's pretty important. So make sure you put those zeros there. Something that I have seen people do with these problems is put a dashed line right here just to kind of point out where your initial numbers were. If you want to do that, you can. Um, I don't know if it's absolutely necessary. I personally don't do that. Anyway, once we have our number line drawn, we then peck, peck, peck. We then pick three test points, and I'm drawing in dots. So I'm going to pick a number to the left of negative 7, like maybe negative 8, something between negative 7 and 3. If I can pick 0, I will, and something after 3, like 4. And we plug those in, too. I like to plug in, too, my factored form. And all we care about is whether we have a positive or a negative. So if I plug in negative 8, negative 8 plus 7 is negative. Actually, it's negative 1. Negative 8 minus 3 is negative 11. And when you multiply those, you get positive 11. So I'm going to make a note that everything on the left side of negative 7 is positive. So I plug in 0, 0 plus 7, and all I care about is the sign. So I get a positive. 0 minus 3 is negative. A positive times a negative is negative. And if I plug in 4, 4 plus 7 is positive. 4 minus 3 is also positive. And we get a positive there. And now that I've done the number line, I go back and I look at what I'm trying to find. This problem said, find things that are greater than zero. Numbers that are greater than zero are positive. So that means my answer is going to be the intervals where the function is positive. That's going to be everything to the left of negative 7 and everything after positive 3. And 
and we will not include negative 7 or 3 because I'm not equal to 0, I must be greater than 0. So my answer is everything before negative 7, so negative, seven, negative infinity to negative 7, and then everything after 3. And that would be the solution to this problem. Yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. So you do the sign analysis, and then you look at your signs to pick the intervals that you need. Let's try this one. Same type problem. I've already set it equal to 0, which means we need to factor it. Now, this is one of those pesky ones with the leading coefficient that's not 1. So, let's see, 3x and x. I need factors that add up to 5. I'm going to use 2 and 1. 1 times 2 is 2. 3 times 2 is 6. If I have a positive 1 and a negative 2, that'll work. So, there, that's factored. And then I find out what makes each of those 0. This one is negative 1 third. This one, my root is positive 2. And then I'll put those on a number line. I'll draw my number line. Negative one third comes before two. Negative whoop. Negative one third, two, and those are actual zeros. So I'm going to make note that those are the roots of my function. And then I will pick my test points. Something to the left of negative one third. Negative one, something between negative one third and two. I'm going to pick zero. Something to the right of two, three, and then we plug in. Three times negative one plus one is negative. Negative 1 minus 2 is negative. If you multiply two negatives, you get a positive. Okay, plug in 0. 3 times 0 plus 1 is positive. 0 minus 2 is negative. If you multiply positive times a negative, you get a negative. Plug in 3. 3 times 3 is 9. Plus 1 is 10, which is positive. 3 minus 2 is 1, which is positive. If you multiply two positive numbers, you get a positive. Uh, then we have to look and see what I was looking for here. This is greater than or equal to zero. Greater than or equal to zero means I want positive numbers and zero, right? We want to pick positive numbers and zero. So that means we're going to pick this right here, but we'll also pick that zero. That's why I would like to write that zero above my numbers, because I want to pick the zeros also. So that's going to be everything before negative one-third. And we will include, so bracket, union, and then including two, everything to the right. And make sure your parentheses and brackets are obvious. Don't, don't draw parentheses like this and brackets like that. Doesn't really work. You good? All right, I think I had two more examples. How, how long have we gone? Seven minutes. So those were a little bit, uh, those were just factoring. Those were quadratics. This one is a rational function, which uh, uh, uglies it up a little bit. Uh, first thing we're going to do is factor. So we have x plus 1, x minus 1. On top, on bottom, we have x plus 1, x minus 5. And we need things to be greater than or equal to 0. Everything is very uh, it's only just, uh, interesting. Oh, yeah, sorry. Um, then we will reduce. We're going to treat this just like we did when we were doing the rational fa fractions, rational functions earlier. Uh, if I cancel x plus 1, what happens if you cancel something? What are you left with? 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 That's right, it's a whole. So we have a whole at x equals negative 1. I'm going to make note of that because that's one of those things we put on our number line. Uh, so now I will reduce. This will turn into x minus 1 over x minus 5. Greater than or equal to 0. And then I'll look again. And let's see, my denominator is 0 at 5, so that means x equals 5, is a vertical asymptote, right? And then we look at the numerator, and if my top is 0, that's a root. So x equals 1 is a root, or an x-intercept, or a 0. You good? You good? Then I'll do my number line, and remember the things we put on the number lines are any x-intercepts, which is 1, any vertical asymptotes, which is at 5, holes also. So I have negative 1, 1, and 5, and make sure you put them in order. Negative 1, 1, and 5. And then make note of what's happening there. Negative 1 is a hole, so I'm going to write hole right above it. At x equals 1, that was my root. Another word for root is 0, so I'm going to put a 0 above it. At x equals 5, that was a vertical asymptote, so I'm going to make a note that that's a vertical asymptote. You need to be aware of what's happening at those points. And now we have to actually pick four numbers. I need to pick something to the left of negative 1, something between negative 1 and 1, something between 1 and 5, and something after 5. And 
I like to plug into the reduced version. You can plug it into any one of these equations, the top one, the factored one before we canceled, or the reduced one. I'm going to plug in to my reduced. So plug in test points here. We're going to plug in to the reduced one. And if I plug in negative 2, negative 2 minus 1 is negative divided by negative 2 minus 5 is negative, and negative divided by negative is positive. Then I'll plug in 0. 0 minus 1 is negative. 0 minus 5 is negative. And a negative divided by a negative is positive. So here it didn't change signs. Usually on your sign chart, things will change signs, but sometimes it doesn't happen. Uh, if I plug in 2, 2 minus 1 is positive. 2 minus 5 is negative. A positive divided by a negative is negative. If I plug in 6, 6 minus 1 is positive. 6 minus 5 is positive. If you divide two positives, you can get a positive. Good, good. Good, good. And let's see. I am looking for numbers greater than or equal to zero. Greater than or equal to zero. Uh, well, see, greater than zero is positive, so I want positive numbers, right? I want positive numbers, right? I want positive numbers, so I want all of that. And I want zero, so I'm also going to include one, because one was a root. Now, I don't include negative 1 because that wasn't a 0. That was a whole. So my answer is going to be everything before negative 1 and then everything between negative 1 and 1. But I will include 1 because that was an actual 0. And then everything after 5, but not including 5. 5 is a vertical asymptote. We don't include that all the way to infinity. So there's our answer for number 3. And I did have grand plans of doing a fourth problem. I'm going to show it to you and just tell you what I would do. Uh, for problems like this, you do need to move this over. So you would subtract that 5 over x minus 6 minus 3 over x plus 2. And then you would have to get a common denominator and, um, and combine this into one fraction. So combine to one fraction with a common denominator. And then once you combine that to one fraction, it will look like number three, and we'll go through everything that we did with number three. You always want your equation to equal zero. You want one fraction. Or if it's not a fraction, then you want to be able to factor it like we did with number two. So there we go. I'm going to stop the recording because I have to go pick up my daughter, and I don't want to have to pay a late fee for picking her up late. So y'all have a great weekend. I'll see you tomorrow.